let's talk about plasma today. Uh, there's a lot going on around the place about plasma, so I thought it would be good to actually have a conversation about what it is, because there's two uses for the word plasma in science, one in biology and one in physics, and they mean entirely different things. So biological plasma relates to plasma in your blood. Now about 55% of the volume of your blood is this pale yellow fluid and it carries around components, things like oxygen, water, hormones, nutrients. This is blood plasma. It's a transport medium. The term plasma itself actually comes from Greek, meaning something formed or moldable substance. Now, in 1927, physicist Irving Langmuir was studying ionized gas. Now, in his experiments, he found that sometimes the gas behaved a little bit like a moldable jelly or a substance that can carry particles. It reminded him of blood plasma, and so he borrowed the word to describe this new state of matter, plasma. We now know that this was kind of a dumb idea, uh, but we're talking about a time like a hundred years ago when people weren't as connected as they are now. Now we get in science that there are words that can cause some confusion and it causes confusion for us too, especially when we're first learning about something. But we just kind of figure it out and then we get on with it. So plasma in physics has no relation to anything biological. That's important here. <laughs> It's an ionized gas. This just means that it is made up of free electrons and ions. Now an ion is an atom that has like lost or gained an electron. So because of its properties, the properties of plasma, it's called the fourth state of matter. Now that can sound a bit mysterious, a bit otherworldly. It really isn't. So ice is a solid. It melts and it becomes a liquid, water. When you add more heat, the liquid evaporates and becomes a gas, steam. When you add even more heat, the gas becomes ionized, plasma. Now the simplest way to put this is that electrons are moving around so fast, or they're far enough away from the ions that they can't reattach. If they did reattach, then it would become a gas again. And if the gas was condensed, it would form a liquid. And if the liquid gets cold enough, it will become a solid. Now there's two types of plasmas, natural and man-made. The natural plasmas that we find in the universe are stars. Every single star that you see in the night sky, including our sun, is a plasma. Now because all stars are plasmas and the interstellar medium between stars contains plasma, 99% of the matter in our entire known universe is in the form of a plasma. Less than 1% is gas, liquid and solid. A naturally occurring plasma that we see closer to home then is lightning. You see, when electricity ionizes the air, we get a flash of plasma. Another one are the auroras that we all love to try and see. That is plasma. It happens when charged particles from the sun interact with the Earth's magnetic field. Now we can also make plasma. We can make things like uh, neon and fluorescent lights that use plasma to create light. Uh, plasma TVs create images using plasma. There's also cutting and welding tools that use plasma. So natural plasma exists in extreme environments in space. Artificial plasma is made using high energy. Plasma physics is a huge field of study. Nearly every research institute or center around the world will have some form of plasma research. And like any area of study, there are some parts of it that are not well understood yet, either because it's difficult to replicate in a lab or it's hard to reach and study directly. Or sometimes as well, it might just not be a priority to anyone. Now the plasma research that will be most recognizable to you, but you might not know it, is fusion research. In order to create nuclear fusion, you need plasma. Now the thing about plasma as well is that it's dynamic. It interacts with electromagnetic fields. It can move like a wave, it has oscillations, it flows. So we can create different structures in a plasma and it can take different shapes. There is a huge amount out there to be discussed around plasma, plasma physics, the research and the different uh, types of things that we can study in relation to plasma. 
So that's basically what plasma is in terms of physics and the difference between the definition and what plasma means in biology. And I hope that you understand now that they are entirely different things. So a lot of what we're seeing in terms of the hype train on social media seems to be confusing properties of blood plasma or like biological plasma with physics and plasma. Um, and kind of combining ideas around both of them into the same concept, it really isn't the same at all. They just happen to use the same word because it comes from a Greek word that can be used to describe certain kind of ideas around both of them. Um, another thing as well is that a lot of the definitions or a lot of the properties that I've seen people describing about the motion of like plasmoids and this concept of uh, behavior and intention. I did find some definitions for plasmoids that describe this behavior. The problem is those definitions that I found um, come from a Dungeons and Dragons expansion pack from 1989 where they named one of their creatures a plasmoid. So guys, be really careful where you get your information from. A lot of the time when you're getting something online, it's usually somebody confusing a few different concepts and they don't know enough yet to realize that they don't actually understand what they're talking about. So yeah, I hope that helps people understand a bit more about plasma. Um, sincerely, a plasma physicist. <laughs> so be careful with whose content you're consuming. Be critical, ask questions, stay nerdy.